Um, hi, welcome. Um, my name is Jenny Alterman. I'm the owner at Rescue Yoga, and um, we're here today to uh, talk about our upcoming yoga teacher training program that's happening in 2020. So um, my teacher, Shannon Buffington, uh, she has had a yoga teacher training program for, uh, I don't know, 15 years, uh, about 15 years. And I have the honor and privilege of being able to host it at our studio here in Carrollton, Texas. So Carrollton, it is just north of Dallas. So if you're not in the area and um, you're wondering where we are, we're just a few miles north of Dallas. Um, so we have a uh, Shannon Buffington. She is an amazing yoga instructor. She is a um, ERYT uh, through Yoga Alliance, and she has been for quite some time. Um, she herself was a studio owner over in Capel for many years and decided to get out of that and wanted to really focus on um, building uh, her students' yoga practice and taking their, their practice to another level and having an in-depth uh, yoga studies program, um, she decided would help people do that. Not only does it help them take their training to a deeper level and learn more about themselves and help transform their life and their practice, um, it also helps them if they so choose, wanted to become a yoga teacher. So our program, it is a 200, it's not my program, it's Shannon's, but um, it is a 200 hour uh, certification and it is approved program through Yoga Alliance. So once you're finished with the program, you could register with Yoga Alliance and become a yoga teacher and be listed in um, their website and um, find clients and people that way. Um, so I wanted to go over a little bit about, so thank you, thank you for joining us and thank all of you for joining us today. Um, I wanted to go over a little bit about the, um, the brochure that we have set up for this particular program so that you can ask any questions that you have about it and see if this is the right program for you. Not all programs are designed evenly. Although Yoga Alliance has a specific criteria that they have to be uh, certified through them, um, not all programs are developed evenly. Um, so I wanted to go through this a little bit and share with you um, some of the uh, highlights of what we do. So we have um, 13, uh, is it 12, 13, 13 modules. Um, that we teach, then each module is one weekend, and that weekend class is on a Saturday and a Sunday from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. We do get a break for lunch. Um, so the first, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four weekends are designed for uh, educating about anatomy and asana. And if you have access to um, our uh, webpage rescueyoga.com you could go to the tab that says in-depth studies program and you would be able to pull up exactly what I'm reading right here. Uh, so the anatomy and physiology helps to gain an understanding of the respiratory nervous system, muscular and skeletal systems and help you apply that knowledge uh, in your yoga practice as you're doing it for yourself and if you decide that you want to teach. Uh, so you learn efficient and safe applications for anatomy movement, uh, modifications, contraindications, and hands-on adjustments. So if you're working with uh, someone one-on-one, -on -one, maybe you're a, a therapist or a physical therapist, you have some other form of therapy that you work with, um, maybe you're a Pilates instructor already um, or a massage therapist, uh, personal trainer. So uh, learning these hands-on adjustments from the yoga perspective uh, would be a really effective way for you to draw more into what it is that you already know. So it's just an add-on. Uh, so four weekends of that, uh, then we have two weekends of vinyasa krama, uh, learning about the energetics of um, the yoga postures, how they go together, um, how you link postures together in a safe way. Um, because you can you can do it in a not safe way and walk out like a raging lunatic. <laughs> uh, so then after that, we will go through um, some pranayama uh, 
learning the basics of the bandhas, mudras, pranayam, breathing techniques. And that is um, a lot of programs um, we've noticed over time. They don't, they might talk about bandhas or mantras or things like that. We spend a whole weekend on it. So Saturday and Sunday both, we talk about those. Um, then we also talk about uh, mantras, the science of sound and um, meditation, um, Sanskrit, talking about theory and practice and how those will play into your yoga practice. Then we go on to talking about the yoga philosophy and history and the yoga sutras. Um, the yoga sutras and the history of yoga, uh, there's a lot of yogis you walk around, they got the bumper sticker, they got it all, the yoga pants, the yoga mat, and if you were to rattle off a yoga sutra 1.1, they would not know um, what you're talking about or where that came from. Um, uh, we want people to understand why are you doing what you're doing? If what you're doing doesn't make sense, where does it come from? Um, and those also, because this is an in-depth studies program, it starts to almost help you learn how to start questioning other areas of your life. Um, other areas where you can create transformation that are using yoga principles and yoga philosophies. Um, so uh, have you guys heard the story about the, the, the mother who makes the ham for Christmas every year and she lops off the end of the ham and sticks it in the pan and cooks it? And the granddaughter says, well, or the daughter says, well, why do you cut the end of the ham off? And the mom says, well, I don't know, because my mom did it. And so they're like, well, let's go ask grandma. So they ask grandma and she says, I don't know, because my mom did it. So they ask great grandma and great grandma says, well, because the ham wouldn't fit in the, the pan. Oh. And it was really about because the a situation back then, but that activity came forward generations. And so they finally got to the heart of it. Um, so if you're lopping the ends off of your ham and you don't know why, <laughs> This program will help you start to create dialogue within um, where you can start to question um, things that are going on in your life. So we spend two weekends on yoga philosophy. And then after that, we work on um, the special population. So if we're working with geriatrics all the way to professional athletes and um, everything in between. So children, uh, uh, seniors, um, people with acts, uh, with injuries, uh, chronic conditions, uh, and then regular, the rest of us, you know, everybody else who's all got back pain, headaches, stress, blah, 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 blah. So, so we help, um, we spend a whole weekend on teaching those things. And then we end up, um, so we do a yoga review, a practice teaching, um, and talk about the business of yoga. So, when you're finished, if you so choose and you want to become a yoga teacher, we have something. Hey, Eddie, just saw this yesterday. <laughs> awesome. So um, we wanted to uh, create an environment where you could learn from business owners. So I teach the uh, business of yoga weekend and having taught uh, yoga for almost 20 years, and having had the studio for 12 years, uh, lots of different things have happened in those years. Uh, lots of learning curves and hurdles have been, have been either run over or they've run over you. And so we've learned a lot. And so we want to make sure that uh, part of the program shares with you how do you get your name out there if you're wanting to share this program and share yoga in general um, with people. So, and then we finish up in October with testing. So if uh, you're not interested in becoming a yoga teacher, that's fine. You don't have to take tests. It's, it's completely optional as much as you like. Um, but we want to make sure that if you decide that maybe you want to do this as a retirement job, um, maybe you're looking to enhance what it is that you're already doing. Uh, who knows where our worlds are gonna take us in 10 years from now. Um, that certification may be something that fits your needs, maybe not then, maybe not now, but it might be then. So um, yeah, I mean, you went through all of the effort to produce the baby, why not birth it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So we do have a required reading list. Um, so the reading list, um, Desa Kachar, The Heart of Yoga, which is a simply phenomenal. And this is the book that we give people um, when they come to us and they say, hey, um, is there a book that I could start getting reading on to get more information? Um, this is the book. Um, the Royal Path, the four chapters on freedom, and the anatomy and asana. We have additional books. They're all listed within our brochure, and you can check that out um, anytime when you're ready. Um, we do have um, some requirements is if you want the Yoga Alliance certification, you got to come to everything. Um, you have to uh, do practices on your own. You have to uh, take the take the trainings and do the classes outside of class time. Um, so we want students to commit to a regular practice as well as having their own personal practice um, for their benefit, because if you don't do the work, then you'll never receive the transformation. Um, so the full course itself for the 13 sessions, it runs at $2,800. Um, we do have uh, grants and scholarships available. Um, we won't know what is available until closer to January. Um, the individual sessions, 11 of them, they're 275 apiece if you want to uh, pay for by session. Um, we do have a $275 non-refundable deposit, and um, that is actually applied to weekend 11. Um, our cancellation, uh, the deposit is non-refundable. If you paid in full, you can get a refund for all of that. And then any weekends um, that uh, up to 14 days prior to the weekend, if you are paying by weekend, you can get a refund there. All right, so here's what you get when you come to our training. So you get this pretty wide binder. <laughs> this binder has 250 pages um, of what it is that you're going to be learning. Um, so within it, we hand it out every weekend, you get a new section. Hey, Tiffany, hi, thanks for joining us. Um, so you get a new section for uh, that particular weekend. And we also, um, uh, along the way, we have a Facebook group that you uh, get to be a part of. And, you know, once you're finished with the training, we don't kick you out. <laughs> you, get, you get to be a part of that forever and ever. Um, and this is a great way for us to share additional content that is not included in the book. So as news comes out about different yoga events or different techniques, uh, along the way, we do share that through our Facebook page. Um, and then uh, when maybe job postings come up or someone needs help with something, we do use that as a tool to communicate with one another. Um, so you get the book and um, you also get a um, uh, links to all of the recordings. So we record every single weekend and we post that up so that everybody gets a copy and so if you need to go back and study those, listen to them, maybe you were sick for uh, a Saturday and you missed out, then you get to um, check in and see what you missed. Uh, you also get a um, 50 percent discount on the rescue yoga classes here. So if you're not local, we do have links where you can um, log in online and listen to the recordings. I have recorded um, hundreds of classes that you can choose from. And then uh, you also get to, um, if you are local, you can come to any of our classes here with the, the um, teacher training discount. So successful completion, uh, once you finish the course, then get your certification, you are a CYT. Um, beyond that, if you want to register with Yoga Alliance, you can, then you will have an RYT uh, uh, identifier with that certification. Um, so I want to open it up and, you know, share a little bit about uh, Shannon. Um, Shannon has been my teacher for uh, 15 years now, and I she teaches um, over in Capel, or is it Flower Mill? It's in Flower Louisville? I don't know. Louisville, yes. So uh, she teaches over in Louisville at Complete Health and Wellness, and she is simply amazing. So seeing her and growing with her through her yoga journey 
over the last 15 years have really seen some yoga in action and seen how she has been able to uh, cultivate uh, different things within her life, you know, even manifesting. Uh, here recently, she manifested a house that she wanted to purchase and was able to use some of her yoga techniques um, as far as like uh, meditation and pranayama to help develop that for herself. Um, she is amazing. She used to be a uh, engineer. Uh, I can't remember. Network engineer. Network engineer. That was it. Thank you. Uh, a network engineer. So she approaches yoga with an engineering mindset, and I absolutely adore that. Um, being a former um, uh, U.S. Army aircraft mechanic and working on aircraft here in Dallas, um, engineers are my cup of tea. So um, so happy to be working with her um, through uh, this next cycle. So Shana's teacher is Rod Stryker, and he is the founder of Para Yoga. So the program that we teach, it is of the Para Yoga lineage. Um, her training is in classical Tantra, Hatha, and Raja Yoga. She is a member of Yoga Alliance with over a thousand hours of training. Uh, she's certified yoga and Ayurveda wellness consultant through the American Institute of Veda, uh, Vedic Studies um, and David Frawley. Uh, she has studied with uh, Pandit Rajamani Tuganat. Is that how you say it? Can you tell me how to say it? <laughs> and Rod Stryker since 2005. Um, so I have been following her shortly right after that. Um, she is amazing. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I ran away from home when I was a kid. I joined the army. I worked on helicopters. <laughs> if you have time, come and I'll share my story with you. I usually do that during class. Um, so I have, I, I own the studio. We started Rescue Yoga in 2007. We opened this location in 2000 and nine and we've been here going strong ever since um we uh let's see 2012 is that when we knocked down the wall 2012 so in 2012 i was uninvited from my day job at love field um, we had a layoff and i was uh one of the people who got the opportunity to experience uh, freedom um through that process and, yeah. and so my life has never been the same since um, so here at Rescue Yoga, we're yogis, but we're more community. We're a tribe. Um, we get the opportunity to share in people's struggles as well as their victories. And we get to rally with each other and help each other and stick up for each other. And it's just a beautiful process that we have going on here. Um, we understand that not everybody is a good fit for us and we're not a good fit for everybody. So we totally, totally get that. And if you check out our program and you come and take some classes with us, you decided that it's not for you, um, that's okay. It really is okay. Um, we want you to be on the path that you're supposed to be on. Um, so I did my first 200 uh, 200 hour teacher training with Purple Lotus in 2007. And I came back in uh, 2014 and I did Shannon's um, teacher training. And then uh, I guess uh, two years ago, I started teaching it, co-teaching it with her. Um, so the benefits that I have experienced have uh, through the program, I, because I went through the other program and I learned about yoga, we spent a lot of time doing the physical postures, but there wasn't a lot of time in doing uh, the deeper work you know, getting to know thyself and figuring out what your life's purpose is and what is it really that I want to do here on this planet. So this program helped me define that. Um, so uh, along with uh, doing some of those other things, I have been trained in yoga for cancer with the Yoga Bridge. Um, I also do uh, the Parkinson's yoga here at Rescue Yoga with the Yoga Adaptive Group. Um, I personally work with um, professional athletes uh, to help their bodies uh, stay uh, ready, game ready. Um, and then I work with the, the everyday Joe who comes in with 
the back pain and the migraines and the stress and I can't touch my toes and can you help me with the shoulder pain and why does one arm go up and the other one doesn't and all of that good stuff. Um, so um, yeah, so MS, scoliosis, cancer, trauma sensitive. I am a disabled veteran uh, from the Army, so having some PTSD um, helps me that's going to kind of sound weird, but it helps me help other people. Um, and so we wanted to just come in and share. Um, I know it's been 20 minutes, but I, I we wanted to take a minute and share with you a little bit about the program and some of the um, questions that you might have. So do you guys have any questions here? Oh, they're going for the book. Like, what's in the book? In terms of just, uh, <laughs> so we do have, um, we lay out at the beginning of the teacher training program uh, or the in-depth studies program, we lay out very clearly what is expected of you as a student to um, do the homework, do the, learn the information, attend the classes and do your practices. So that's all very clearly laid out in when you come on your first day. And the expectations that we set for ourselves is also laid out so that you see, okay, this is what, what we're providing you for your, for your training. So. Um, I just had a little bit, um, could you tell a little bit detail on how much of the, the Vinyasa Krama practice that you're gonna do and then um, how are we going to space it out? Right. In so, terms of the practice through the program. so Vinyasa Krama is weekends five and six. So we spend two weekends talking about that. And that also includes um, the chakras, um, the pranavayus. Um, so, and then the energetics of how all of those work together. So, we got to learn the postures first. Right. So we spend four weekends learning the postures and we learn them in a sequence of forward folds, back bends, laterals and twists and then inversions. So, so we break them out into different segments. And then um, once we have all of that underneath our belt, then we go into the vinyasa krama where we're actually working on, okay, how do we link these postures together? Mm -hmm. And then we do practices where you can feel, oh, a backbend practice did this for me. Oh, when I incorporated this breathing technique with this, uh, these different postures together, this is the result that I experienced as a vata or a kapha or a pitta. So, and we go into all of the doshas and um, depending on the size of the group and the level of um, experience that the, the students have, we may get to go deeper into all of those things. Um, so, but we do spend two full weekends on those. And not only do I spend, or we spend the time teaching it to you, is you also have from day one, you are starting to teach it to someone else. Okay. So you don't wait till the end of the program and then you only mm -hmm. take the, the the right. one yeah. practical is you're teaching all the way through the whole entire thing. Mm -hmm. So we break you down into groups and, and you go at it. And there's questions and new techniques and, and different things that people are learning along the way. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, so Eddie says, does your vinyasa krama include dynamic sequencing, working into postures? Yes. And what is the teacher student ratio? So our program, um, are you talking about the teacher student ratio of the program or what you'll be competent in teaching once you get out of the program? Um, but yes, the Vinyasa Krama does include the dynamic sequencing. So it's important that you work in a way that's safe and work in a way that's healthy. And I wanted to, where is the, I think I actually have it written down somewhere. So you learn the energetics of the sequencing, how to structure an effective practice 
and wise preparation for the most beneficial practice. Um, we cover the energies, the chakras, the pranavayus, the primary doshas, and the gunas. Um, oh, it's touch screen. Oh my gosh. My computer's touch screen. I just figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the, the Eddie, great question. So the teacher student ratio for our program is um, currently right now, our goal is to have 20 students. Um, if we have a couple of more, that's fine. There's usually some people who get partially through the program and they can't make it all the way. Um, but we do, I would probably not be comfortable with more than 20 people. Um, I'm not comfortable with teaching more than 20 people in a class. Um, so um, we have had the most we've had is 22. Um, so Eddie, I hope that answers your question. Um, so, but no, we don't have an official cap, but only once have we approached um, something like that. Oh, you just gave this back to me. Okay. Okay. I'm like, do I need to read this? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. If that awesome. Is. All right. So um, anyone have any other questions? Yeah, I think sequencing is a really, really big factor into um, a class. I've been to a lot of classes where the sequencing was all over the board mm -hmm. and you walk out feeling like, oh my gosh, what just happened to me? And then for the rest of the day, you're a little bit kind of kooky. Um, and I guilty. I used to teach that way. I used to be walking in and going, okay, how's everybody feel? Oh, you need a back bend. You need a lateral. Okay, let's do an inversion too. And it, I used to teach that way until I came to this program and I learned. And okay, so I'll show you the most important um, page out of this whole program. Where is it? And <clears throat> these, this page right here is worth its weight in gold. And I would pay $2,800 um, for just this one piece, piece of paper that I got. Um, so Shannon created this, this page. I'm not going to show it too fast because I don't want anybody to, I want you to come. Mm -hmm. So this page on a class blueprint. So in this class blueprint, it talks about how to safely create a class for your students, no matter what, uh, if they're advanced or if they're um, a beginner or if they have injuries, you can, you're going to learn all of the things to address those students. But at the same time is you're also going to learn how to sequence the class to keep them all at the end of the class they all have this blissful experience. I mean, that's why a lot of people go to yoga is because they want to get get away from crap and they want to experience bliss, right? I mean, is that why you come? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I teach yoga so that I can help facilitate bliss. That's why I do this. If people were not experiencing bliss, I, I would not continue doing it between other practices and yoga right and right you can go work out at the gym as, you did as long as you want but if you are doing something where your heart rate is up you're you're creating stress on your body to come at the end of the session. right mm -hmm. and you're gonna want you you might find yourself being angry or um a a, a abrasive or aggressive um after a yoga practice you should walk out.